Good morning. What a blessing and a joy it is for us to be gathered together on the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and are glad in it. I welcome each and every one of you to this time of worship and, and celebration. This is Memorial Day weekend, and, and as I reflect on, on this weekend and what it means, I, I think of my, my own father who served in the U.S. Navy and served during three wars, and and I think of my father-in-law who's living with us, who is a World War II vet at 102 years old, and give thanks to God for, for not only his service, but for his life. Uh, and I give thanks uh, for so many people. And I just share this morning that we think of those that we know, family, friends, neighbors that have served or are continuing to serve, and give thanks for all that they have done. I also want to share this morning as we begin uh, we pray for Thelma Loud, who is here this morning, and the family and the loss of her husband, Oscar, um, as we prepare for services at the end of uh, June. And we'll get there's information in your bulletin, and we'll have even more information as the uh, weeks go on. So we lift up prayers for that family as well. And Oscar also served in the service, so we remember him as well and give thanks. I want to invite you, if you've not already done so, to take the attendance pads. They're usually at the end in the center and pass them down and around and make sure everybody has the opportunity uh, to sign in that we might know of your presence. Um, I invite you, as you feel comfortable, to stand and to turn and somehow greet one another. Even if it's just a, a wave, uh, that is uh, awesome. And to remain standing as you are able as we share in our opening uh, hymn, O Spirit of the Living God, let us stand. Please remain standing if you're able for the call to worship. Today we rejoice, for the Lord brings justice. Everyone can see God's glory. Together we can love God and resist evil. May God protect and strengthen us and all God's people. You are the Lord's people. Let us celebrate and praise the one and only God. You may be seated. want to uh, have you turn your attention to not only the screens, but the announcements that uh, are in your bulletin. Again, uh, under those announcements there, there are word about the upcoming memorial services at the end of June. I also want to share uh, an invitation for those that might be interested in our new member inquiry class that we are having coming up next Sunday. Uh, if you could let me know by, by at least by Tuesday, if you are interested, if you have questions about what is that, 
uh, feel free to see me after the service, and I'll be glad to share with you. Um, even if you don't join the church uh, but still want to come and hear, feel free. We welcome you, and uh, we will serve brunch. So uh, I do need to know uh, if you are attending so we can make sure we have uh, enough uh, food for, for everyone. I don't want to have to try to do like Jesus and spread the fishes and the loaves and, and, and all. Also want to invite our graduates, calling all graduates, uh, that on June 12th we will be recognizing and celebrating our graduates, whether they are uh, promoting from eighth grade all the way to, through postgraduate degrees or, or some other degree of promotion. We want to get those names so if you can call the church office and let Eileen know or leave a message. Uh, if it's a graduate from high school or postgraduate, if you could say where they will be attending, if they are, next, uh, next year. Um, or if you've received a postgraduate or a graduate degree, uh, what that is in. Uh, that would be wonderful that we could share that with the church family as well. And then on June 12th, we will invite those that are present with us to come up front. We will bless them and celebrate them and... Uh, uh, say good luck and help them along their way as they move on in the next part of their journey. Also, just again, just to remind you, on the back table, we are still looking for a couple spots for greeters, I think it is, so if you, for June, so if you are able to or are interested in uh, helping to volunteer, lead worship in some way, usher, greeter, uh, tech, uh, liturgist, just uh, see me and we will help you out and, and train you. So we invite you to be a part of that as well. This morning, our, our quilt is for one of our church members, uh, Belma Adamas. Uh, Belma and, and Jorge, George, uh, had gone to the Philippines, and, and when they returned, uh, Belma uh, went into the hospital for some surgery and all, and she is still... Uh, struggling in her healing, so we want to offer this quilt and this blessing uh, upon it and for God to bring healing for Belma. Let us pray. Most gracious and comforting God, we thank you, as we always do, for the opportunity to share in uh, this gift a gift as a sign of your loving presence to Velma. We thank you that you have been present with her through this whole ordeal, and you continue to hold her in your arms. We pray, O oh God, as she receives this gift of love, she will know how we have reached out to her, her church family. And we pray, O oh God, that she feels your spirit as well as ours as she wraps this quilt around her. Holy God, we thank you for your healing power and grace. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We want to invite you to tie a prayer knot as you go out. It'll be up on the rack outside the door to your right. Uh, just take a moment, go out, tie a prayer knot, and then... Uh, say a prayer for Belma, and we will be sharing this with, with her. As we continue in our prayers, I want to share with those that are at home, uh, just go ahead and send up your prayers, and we will get those and make sure that they get out during the week and let people know of the prayers that, that you have as, as well. want to begin the candle for peace. This candle has light is now expanding. Not only do we ask for peace and an end to war in Ukraine, we lift up a prayer for peace in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and in our families as we mourn the loss again of 19 children and their two teachers coming on the hills, hill, hills, hills of of those that were lost in Buffalo, New York, and the one that was lost in Laguna Woods. So we ask God's prayer for healing for those communities, for those families, and for care. We 
We light this candle for COVID. We've been doing this since we have uh, been in the midst of the pandemic. And it seems like there are times like we forget that it's present. But the reality is that it is present and it changes its form. And, and we know this because of the, the number of people in our church family that have received positive tests. And, and so we lift up prayers for them and others that continue to battle the COVID disease. And we pray for continued uh, caution for everyone there any other I was about ready to light a candle but I want to ask I can still light it but are there prayers over here on this side start over here go over here are there prayers okay Karen So prayers of, of uh, traveling mercies for Carolyn and Dan and, the, and uh, give thanks that Dan has been healing from his COVID and is uh, well enough and ready to, to travel. So we give thanks for that as well and lift up God. To, and we will miss them. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Jenny. Janet shares uh, prayers for all the, the teachers and children. This is their last week of, of school. And, and we know, as we share that, it was the last week of school for those children. So we will pray for their safety for all our children uh, as they prepare that they can have the fun uh, in anticipation of looking forward to a uh, summer break. So we lift up prayers. Diane. So joy that Mary Jean Gordon is ha going home from rehab where she has been for a number of weeks or even months and is heading home and going to be, be home. And we give God thanks for, for that and for the adjustments that she will still need to make. Let us lift these prayers, those that are on our prayer list and, and also the prayers in our hearts and minds to God. Let us pray. Holy God, as we come into this place, the words that have come into our minds and our hearts this week have been sadness, have been anger, have been grief. The words, O oh God, that have been slow to come to us have been forgiveness, have been hope, have been love. But God, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus, we are reminded that in sacrifice there was hope and is hope. That in the resurrection there is love. And in our mourning there is the promise of your healing grace that will fill us lift us and move us forward as your children and people of faith. So we gather this morning, O oh God, to celebrate together in worship, to mourn and comfort each other in loss and hurt, to 
grow together. That we will be strong as we move from this place to be the viable signs of life, hope, and peace in our families and in our community. And yes, Lord, even in the world. We light these candles, O oh God, to show that the light goes into the darkness. And the darkness of death, the darkness of destruction, the darkness of evil will not and cannot overcome the light that you shine forth in your Son, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit that is forever and ever. We thank you, God, for the presence of those lights throughout the world. Those lights that stand for peace, those lights that stand for justice, those lights that represent the saints that go with us and before us. As we take a moment, O oh God, to share our innermost prayers, we pray and lift them up to you. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Hear our prayers of hope and promise. Hear our prayers of joy. Hear our prayers for grace and love. Hear our prayers that we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And the prayer that we pray as he has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me. That they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. I want to speak this morning in response to the mass shootings and killings that happened in Uvalde, Texas at Robb Elementary School that took the lives of 17 precious children and two teachers. I want to speak this morning in response to the shooting and the taking of lives of 10 people in Buffalo, New York, as they shopped in a grocery store. I want to speak to the response to the taking of a life of a doctor trained to save lives who was killed while he was worshiping at a Presbyterian church in Laguna Woods. This doctor whose last act of life was saving lives. Now some of you might be nervous about what I'm going to share. Will we talk about gun control? Make this political. Though this is a topic that needs to be addressed, it's not what I'm going to respond to. You still may not like what I have to say, but I believe our scripture. Our scripture, which I didn't choose in response to these acts of violence, this was a scripture that had come up already and I was planning on preaching, but I believe this scripture speaks to our situation and how we can move forward. I'm mad. I am. Mad at the shooters for taking precious, innocent lives. I'm mad at the reason that these persons felt compelled to go out and bring violence upon those people. I'm mad at the politicians and, and other leaders who continue to justify why we don't change the st status quo and choose not to act for justice and love to make the changes that are needed. I must go to the scriptures and be reminded what God is speaking to me and to all of us to embrace these words from verse 25 of our reading, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. As mad as I am to the point where I'd like to, to lash out and scream and do all those things, I'm reminded that Jesus' prayer for his disciples as well as those throughout the centuries from that time on, and to us as well. That prayer, that response, is a response that we should act out of love, the love that God has given us through Jesus Christ. As we studied this scripture passage on Wednesday's morning Bible study, there was a, a question that, that came out. How do we preach love? How do we preach love? And as I reflected on that, I, I also am reminded of an episode of one of my, my favorite shows, a fictitious show about the running of the government, West Wing. Some of you may watch that show, may have watched that show, may never want to watch that show. But I'm reminded 
of a particular episode, I believe it was in season three, maybe season four, where this fictional president, President Josiah Barley, was going to be speaking at a fundraiser. And just earlier in that day, there was a mass killing of 44 people by a bomb, and he gets up to speak. And what I'd like to do is take that speech, that piece that was in that script, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweak it. I'm going to take some prose license and kind of insert some of the things that have happened in these communities and to us in the last week and a half. And I hope this kind of resonates with us and we can connect with it and trying to understand, to begin to answer this question, how do we preach love? The speech begins with the president at the podium and, and he shares these words, restoring abundance amid an economic shortfall, securing peace in a time of global conflict, sustaining hope in the winter of anxiety and fear. More than any time in recent histories, America's destiny is not of our own choosing, but I would insert in some ways it is of our own choosing. And in the last few years, the last couple of weeks, we did not speak nor did we provoke an assault on our freedom and our way of life. We did not expect nor did we invite a confrontation with evil. Yet the true measure of a people's strength is how they rise to the ma master that moment when it does arrive. Nineteen children and two teachers, ten African Americans, one doctor, were killed over the last week and a half in Buffalo, New York, Laguna Woods, and also at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. The doctor who rushed the shooter at the church, the teachers who tried to shelter their students from the shooter, acted in a way of giving their life for their friends and their children. As we are reminded by Scripture, no greater love does one have than to give their life for another. They gave their lives for their neighbors and their friends. The streets of heaven are too crowded with angels today. They are our students and our teachers, African Americans and faithful followers of Christ, our neighbors, our parents, and our family in Christ. The streets of heaven are too full of angels, but every time we think we have measured our capacity of faith to meet a challenge, we look up and we are reminded that capacity of faith may well be limitless. This is the time for followers of Christ heroes. We will do what is hard. We will achieve what is great. This is the time for followers of Christ to reach for the impossible. God bless their memory. This was some of those words and some of what happened to us in the last week and a half. This is how we can begin to preach love, I believe. We identify with the victims. We mourn with those who lost their loved ones and the communities who have been devastated. And we affirm that we are all one as God's children, regardless of skin color, ethnicity, or age, that we are all one, the body of Christ. As such, we begin by praying, praying for healing, praying for forgiveness, praying for the love of God through Christ to stir us into action, to reveal to us what that action might be to show us the resources that we might need to, to carry out our, our actions, the courage to fulfill our actions. Praying is the cornerstone of our relationship with God. I believe praying is the first concrete step that we can take to reveal how we can bring about change and into violence, to bring 
the reality of love one another as God has loved us into our families and into our neighborhoods and make it and create it and live it. As followers of Jesus and in reading our Bible, we are taught over and over again that we are to pray to God. And with God, all things are possible. But deep down, deep, deep down, do we believe it? Do we believe the impossible can occur when we turn on the television, when we hear again and again of atrocities that have happened in our world, in our communities? Does the impossible really occur? We say we believe it and we pray. We prayed this morning for peace and into violence, for forgiveness, for healing. I pray for the impossibility in my prayer this morning. And I pray for peace for our world and an end to violence, for forgiveness, unity of all people. I pray for these things and more. But aren't there times, aren't there times when there is a little voice inside of you? There is inside of, of me. It's a confession of mine right now. Yeah, but is it going to happen? Maybe not in this world, not in this time. It never has, it never will. All I have to do is read the newspaper, turn on the television. The human race just isn't made that way. And then we might wonder if such prayers by, by followers of, of Christ make us like Don Quixote, tilting at windmills and dreaming impossible dreams. So how about our prayers? Do we ever pray for what we really would like to see happen, but which can, cannot? And if you do, why? Or do you pray only for the things that are possible to protect yourself from disappointments and from hurts? One reason we are sometimes urged to pray for the seemingly impossible is because such prayers stretch us and, and put before us the things that, that we should work on as people of faith. In that way of thinking, we should pray for world peace, an end to the war in Ukraine, killings in our neighborhoods and communities, because it reminds us that even if complete world peace and an end to violence is not possible. There are still conflicts that may be able to be headed off because we, or the leaders that we support, are motivated to look for peaceful resolutions of dis for disagreements between nations and between groups. That programs can be developed to help those who might lean towards violent tendencies or lessen the opportunities for people to obtain weapons for killing. And it is true that what we believe about the problems we face can make the difference in whether we even attempt to solve them. We can even think such prayers are akin to the Martin Luther King's great I Have a Dream speech, which set our, our goals for bringing equal equal treatment and opportunity for all, regardless of their race. I doubt that the most optimistic observer would say that everything that King talked about in his speech has become a reality. As a matter of fact, we may even have taken steps backwards as far as inclusiveness. But more than we would have expected at the time of that speech, has become a reality, and there still are possibilities for change and hope. But because we are talking about prayer, about communicating and fellowshipping with God, it is frankly not enough to think of prayer as simply setting out our goals for humankind, no matter how noble and even Christian those goals may be. Prayer is addressed to God, and thus it is more about what God wants than what we want. 
And in that regard, it is helpful to remember that as people who follow Jesus, we have a leader who talked about impossibilities and that should make us question our assumptions uh, about what things are, in fact, impossible. There's the incident in the Gospel of, of Matthew where the disciples of Jesus tried to heal a, a, a young person with epilepsy, and they couldn't do it. And Jesus came and he healed the boy, and they asked, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus' response was, because of your little faith. For truly, I tell you, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you will be able to say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, I need to make a note here for us to be careful about the conclusions we draw, what Jesus said on this occasion. The conclusion that seems the first step to, towards uh, is that the reason the things we pray don't happen is because we don't have enough faith, even enough of a small grain of mustard seed. But a sounder conclusion, however, is that faith is not the power that accomplishes miracles. God is. And as one biblical commentator points out in Matthew, faith is always not a quality of the one praying but a relationship of practical trust with the one to whom prayer is offered. So if we believe God is all-powerful, all praying for the impossible makes sense only if we also believe God wants things to be different than they are. We cannot, friends, by ourselves bring about world peace and and the end to racial discrimination and, and make all Christians one as Jesus and God are one, we may be able to accomplish some small parts of those things, but only God can, can make them happen in any kind of complete way. What we do know, friends, however, is this. In praying for all God's children to be united and to be one, Jesus asked for the seemingly impossible. When he taught his disciples and in a way taught us to pray what we call the Lord's Prayer, he concluded, the, concluded in the petition, Thy will be done. Which is another seemingly impossible thing when applied to the world as we see it. If Jesus prayed for the impossible, is there any reason that we who follow him should not? Is not the act of praying for the impossible an expression of that mustard seed faith that Jesus said was crucial? Is it not in the end the way of saying that, that we believe that whatever happens, ultimately we are in the loving hands of God? You see, friends, if we believe that possibilities are limited and that boundaries are set, then praying for the impossible makes no sense. At minimum, it is wasted effort, but even more, it is evidence of how ridiculous we are. But, but, if we believe in God, in God's power, God's love, and God's goodness, then our prayer may, may be cooperation and is cooperation with God's will. In this way, the resources and the actions to be taken to bring about peace, to bring an end to violence, to bring justice, and loving neighbor will be revealed to us that we can take part and invite others to join us. So friends, prayer is the first step in preaching and living God's love that leads to us making this a reality. God's will be done. Amen. As we prepare to respond in our love for God, our offering, I remind you that 
There are offering envelopes in the chairs if you are in need of them as well as we give to support the ministries of the church. Our Golden Basket uh, ministry this week, uh, missionary uh, Reverend Andrew Sun Lee, who is serving in Cambodia, and we invite you, if you want to support our missionary, to do so as that basket comes by. I invite the ushers to come forward at this time as we give of our gifts and our love. Loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts. We pray, O oh God, that we may use them to share the love and the hope and the healing for your people. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in our closing song. As words will be on the screen, help us accept each other or in your hymnal.
Again, I invite you to tie a prayer knot as you leave uh, that we might lift this quilt up for, for Belmont. Go now and may the healing of our God be with you. May the loving embrace of, our, of the Son, Jesus Christ, surround you. And the peace of the Spirit fill you and move you this day and always. Amen.